Leaving your valuables or a chocolate bar in a car is a no-brainer. But there are other things people often overlook. Here's what to watch out for before leaving your car. Number 1 is aerosol cans, hairspray, deodorant, spray paint, household cleaner, and that sort. On the back of these cans, you might notice a storage temperature recommendation. Well, stick to that. Here's what can happen. Since these cans are pressurized, they become more sensitive to temperature. What's inside the aerosol may expand, and this may result in a crack. And then, the can can blow up. Temperatures above 100 degrees Fahrenheit are already alarming, and it can easily get as hot as that in your car on a warm summer day. Researchers from the USA have figured out how long it takes a car to turn into a sweat factory on a hot day. Within one hour, the insides of the car parked in the sun reaches 95 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter, with an average temperature of 116 degrees Fahrenheit. So, if you want your car in one piece and run it, take aerosol cans with you. The second item is sunscreen. Sunscreen is vital for your skin since it decreases the risk of skin complications and prevents skin aging caused by the sun. This includes wrinkles, sagging, and age spots. But when you leave sunscreen in your car, it gets exposed to high temperatures and it can ultimately shorten its shelf life. If you end up finding spoiled sunscreen, you might notice a funny smell when you open the cap. Plus, the heat might cause the cap to open and the sticky substance will get all over the car. The same rule applies to lipsticks and other cosmetics as well. The next one is plastic bottles. There are two reasons why you shouldn't leave them inside your car. Firstly, a plastic water bottle can act as a lens, magnifying the sun's rays and starting a fire. A fire department in Oklahoma conducted an experiment and confirmed that the danger of fire was real. David Richardson from that department says it can happen if the beam of light is focused enough. The second reason is related to your health. Many plastic bottles contain bisphenol, a potentially toxic compound. The BPA levels can increase at high temperatures, and that can be harmful to your body. There's a chance that this chemical can get into your drink after you leave the bottle inside the vehicle. Oh, and batteries! They can lose their capacity to work at full power when they're left abandoned in the car. You can buy a new pair and fix this problem, but it won't be as easy to solve the problem of leakage or a rupture. It can be bad for your health because battery acid is dangerous when inhaled and highly corrosive. The reason for leakage is again related to high temperatures. Battery manufacturers recommend keeping their products at room temperature. This fact is partially related to batteries. It's about electronics. Have you ever realized how hot your phone can get when it's exposed to the sun? You're driving and let's say looking at the GPS on your phone. Even in this situation, your phone can heat up. What will happen to it after hours of sun exposure? Phone companies are strongly against customers leaving their devices in vehicles because they might shut down, get damaged, or, you know, boom! Personal belongings are another priority on the list. A wallet or a handbag may come to one's mind first. Yet, a passport or even some change you leave near the passenger seat is sometimes enough to attract a thief. Better to keep such stuff out of sight, for example, by storing it in the trunk instead of leaving it in the back seat. Number 7 is also related to theft. Life can be too hectic sometimes, and it's understandable if you can't clean your car frequently. But leaving garbage in the car is another mistake. Thieves tend to search for messy-looking cars. They think that the owner doesn't use such a vehicle frequently. How about plants? I know it isn't that common to keep plants in the car on a daily basis, but sometimes you need to move them. The heat inside the vehicle can easily dehydrate the poor thing. Medications are another thing you shouldn't keep in the car for too long. The constantly changing temperatures inside the vehicle can decrease the effectiveness of your pills. Authorities recommend keeping most medications at 59 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit in a cool and dry place. 
Important documents that contain your personal data shouldn't be left in the vehicle either. Some examples of such documents are tax forms, financial statements, and school transcripts. A thief could commit fraud or identity theft using this valuable information. And there's also food and drinks. Experts recommend not leaving groceries or leftovers in a warm car for more than two hours or only an hour when it's over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The same rule applies in the winter, too. Canned foods, for example, have a high risk of going bad if a can of sweet peas, let's say, gets frozen in the car. The effect will be similar to what would happen to soda. Let it thaw in the refrigerator instead of leaving it at room temperature. If the product doesn't look or smell normal, throw it away in a place where not even an animal can find it. Don't try to taste it, just trust your senses. If the item seems rusted or there are some cracks in the can, it should end up in the trash too. Eggs are another example. Normally, eggs shouldn't be frozen. But let's suppose you forgot one grocery bag in the trunk of the car and the weather was so cold at night that the eggs got frozen. Keep the eggs in the refrigerator before use. They should be hard cooked. It's your only option. You see, freezing causes the yolk to become thick and syrup-like. It loses that natural flow and doesn't mix well with other ingredients. You shouldn't leave your pets alone in the car, obviously. And not just because of a potential rise in temperature. They will feel uncomfortable without you, their best friend accompanying them. In their frustration, they might do something to get noticed, which can be, for example, ruining the interior of the vehicle. Now let's return to the winter season again. If possible, keep the gas tank of your car over half full. This can prevent the fuel lines from freezing. It also makes it easier to start the engine and hit the road in the morning. While keeping an eye on the fuel bar, it might be a good idea to glance at the tire pressure too. The cold can result in tire pressure drops. Not only high, but also low temperatures can damage some items. A good example is paint cans. They should be quickly taken out of the vehicle in the winter. The ingredients in the paint can experience expansion, separation, and clumping due to the cold. In other words, you won't be able to use this paint anymore. Weather also affects wooden musical instruments like violins or guitars. Changes in temperature and humidity can cause wooden instruments to warp, crack, or split. Glasses get affected by fluctuating temperatures too. In a hot car, plastic frames can bend. Or plastic can become brittle when it's very cold. This makes glasses prone to breaking. Don't leave house keys and garage door openers inside the car. This is an everyday practice for many people, but it's risky. They can get into the wrong hands. To listen to music, most people connect their phones to the car or listen to the radio. CDs are getting less and less used these days, but don't leave them in the car anyway. They might get warped and you won't be able to use them anymore. Can you think of any other items you shouldn't leave in the car? Did you know that every 15 seconds, a home burglary occurs in the United States? This means that approximately 4,800 burglaries happen every day. And the police can only solve 13% of all the reported cases. So yeah, home security is nothing to be joked about, and so I won't. But still, don't worry. It's not like you need to turn your house into a fortress to feel safe. There are a great number of things you can do to keep the bad people out of your house and keep your valuables safe without breaking the bank. First things first, homes without a security system are 300% more likely to be broken into and burglarized, so you should definitely consider setting up one. However, there are many different types of security systems out there. That's why it can get overwhelming to choose the best one for your specific needs, desired level of protection, and budget. Yet again, it all comes down to two options professional installations, and DIY installations. Let's go through both of them together. Professional installed systems require professional monitoring and usually have contracts that are likely long-term. Professional systems come with fees. However, companies usually require lower upfront equipment costs since they will spread the cost throughout the course of your contract. Once you decide on a professional installation, 
The company will first schedule an appointment with one of their experienced technicians who can conduct a security assessment and explain all your options to you. And as long as your contract is valid, you can report any problems you have with the system to them so they can make sure the equipment works correctly. All in all, you should pick professionally installed security systems if you want to put up your feet and relax instead of watching long hours of tutorial videos or reading pages of manuals. Still, professionally installed security systems may not work for you, especially if you're a renter due to the contract commitment conditions. Or maybe you're not a renter, but you simply have budget limitations. That's where DIY installations come in handy. The greatest thing about DIY systems is that while the average monitoring price is around $50 per month on professionally installed systems, it is around $28 a month on DIY ones. Plus, there are no installation fees with DIY systems either. Yet again, you should expect higher upfront equipment costs if you're going to pick this option. And there's also the fact that DIY home security systems come with the risks of improper equipment placement and missing security vulnerabilities a pro would catch. At the end of the day, the most important thing you need to do before choosing a system is evaluate the needs of your neighborhood as well as your house. Did you know that 34% of burglars simply use the front door when breaking into a home? That means if your door is not strong and secure enough, you're basically inviting the burglars in. So setting up security systems is not enough. You need to inspect all your exterior doors, too. Make sure the door frames are strong and the hinges are protected. You can always use door reinforcement kits to add extra protection. If your door has a mail slot, don't forget to check if it's possible for someone to reach through it to unlock the door. When moving into a house or an apartment that was previously occupied by someone else, change the door locks. This is the easiest way to ensure that no stranger can just walk into your house using the keys. One other way to boost security for your door is to use wireless doorbell cameras. This one from Amazon is extremely user-friendly. It's 100% wireless, it has a built-in rechargeable battery that can last 1-2 to two months, so you won't have to charge those too often. You can track the battery situation from the phone app. It also has motion detection technology and super night vision. And you don't need to worry about the weather conditions because it's also waterproof. By the way, don't forget about the sliding glass doors. You can use a window bar or dowel in the track to keep them from being forced open. Or you can add a door sensor or glass break sensor to get alerted if and when someone is tampering with them. We're getting into the very basics of home security now. The percentage of burglars entering a home through a window is as high as 23%. The main reason for that is because, most of the time, people forget to lock their windows. Yet again, burglars can always break the glass. If you don't want that to happen, you can try reinforcing the glass with window security film, adding window bars, or installing window sensors. If none of that is possible, you can also plant prickly bushes under the first floor windows to discourage burglars from choosing your house to break in. Now, what's the difference between an actor and a burglar? Burglars don't like to be in the spotlight. <laughs> That's why having outdoor lighting is to your advantage. Lights should be placed around your front and backyards, along pathways, and near the garage. To make your outdoor security lights more effective, you can use motion-activated ones. Take this one for example, it's solar-powered, so it'll help you save energy. But that doesn't mean you won't have any light once the clouds cover the sky. It's able to run 4-5 to five nights on rainy days. Also, don't allow the burglars to play hide-and-seek. While trees and shrubs may make your home look more beautiful, they also provide a convenient hiding spot for burglars. That's why you should trim down trees and plants, at least the ones close to your house that could be used for cover. Choose smaller flowers and bushes instead, so that burglars don't have a hiding spot to wait for you to leave your home. The same thing goes for any lock gates, sheds, or other outdoor buildings you have. Make sure those places are locked. Burglars can use stools and ladders to climb in from the windows, too, so don't tempt them by leaving one outside. Now this one goes without saying, but I will anyway. Lock the garage. Even if there's no access to your home through there, 
it's likely that you still have plenty of valuable stuff stored in there that burglars might be interested in. It's also wise to store your garage door opener inside your house rather than leave it in your car. This way, you'll be preventing burglars from easily taking it. If you use a security code to open your garage, then keep it confidential and avoid entering it in front of other people, including neighbors. Some neighbors, well, you just don't know. Installing a driveway alarm will also help secure the garage. Now These days, not just burglars, but porch pirates, aka package thieves, are a big problem too. Last year, almost 1 in 7 Americans fell victim to them. This is where security cameras proved to be useful. First of all, they work as a deterrent. And secondly, if someone were to really steal your package, you'd be able to identify them thanks to the security footage. If you can't spare some money to get a good security camera for the time being, you can opt for a fake one. They're a lot cheaper, and they will help make your home look more secure than it actually is. This one is worth considering if you're searching the market. It contains a flashing light, which makes it look as realistic as it gets. Now, last but not least, having a safe wouldn't hurt. And don't worry, it doesn't have to be one of those uncrackable giant titanium ones in the heist movies, like Ocean's 23. Burglars may still be able to break into your house despite all the precautions. So, you still need to make sure your valuables are protected at all times. You can hide all things important from your expensive jewelry to your vital documents in there just to be extra safe. If you're going to get yourself one, make sure it is fire-resistant, waterproof, and heavy enough that a thief can't pick it up and walk away with it. As they say, better safe than sorry. You check into your hotel room, connect to Wi-Fi, jump on the bed, and post 15 photos of your new window view. When the initial surge of excitement is gone, you notice a suspicious blinking light on your big TV. Could it be that someone is watching you? Or have you just seen too many spy movies? Well, hidden cameras come in all shapes and sizes. Large ones are easy to spot, but the small ones can be really sneaky and inconspicuous. They can be hiding behind furniture, in decorations or vents, and anywhere else you'll have trouble noticing. There are even special cameras that can be hidden in everyday movable objects like alarm clocks, picture frames, vases, and lamps. Check to see if these objects are facing at a strange angle or if they're positioned to get the best view of your room or bathroom. The easiest way to spot a hidden cam is to look for the lens reflection because all cameras come with lenses. Turn off the lights and slowly scan the room with a flashlight, laser pointer, or a special wireless spy cam detector. It comes with infrared scanning lights and one illuminating light. When you find a reflective red spot, you gotta turn on the flashlight to help check if there is a hidden camera. Definitely check the vents along with any other holes and gaps in the walls or ceiling. Some advanced detectors even show you what the camera is seeing, making it way easier to spot and disable. The detectors only work on cameras that are turned on and working normally, though. Your mobile phone can also help you find some hidden threats. Turn on Bluetooth and walk around. See if any unknown devices pop up on the screen. Another idea is to install a network scanner app that shows all devices that are connected to the Wi-Fi network you're using at the hotel. When it's done scanning, study the list for devices called something like IP camera or cam. Plus, you can put your phone on selfie mode, turn off the light and close the curtains and look around the room slowly while focusing on the screen. Keep an eye out for purple or white lights on the screen. You can play detective some more and call your friend or family member and start walking around your room. Secret cameras should emit a sort of radio frequency. It will most likely interfere with your phone call signal. If you start hearing any weird noises while you're on the phone in a certain area of your room, make sure to inspect it carefully. Check out the light switches, electrical outlets, lamps, and other objects you normally wouldn't pay attention to. If they look a bit crooked, have a hole, or seem misplaced, it could be a sign that someone tampered with them. 
Many spy devices need wires, and whoever installed them had to hide those wires, often behind the vinyl baseboard. That's why the place where the floor and the wall meet is another area you should check. Ridges, bumps, or discoloration could be a sign there's a microphone hiding there. The same goes for spots on ceilings and walls, even if they're not larger than a coin. If you do find a hidden camera or something looking suspicious, don't shy away and let the hotel administration or your booking service know about it. Don't try to touch or move the device yourself. If the hotel denies everything, contact local law enforcement. After you've scanned the room for cameras, check out the mirrors. Someone could be watching you from the other side. First, see if the mirror is built into the wall or can be adjusted. If the mirror is semi-transparent, it will be built into the wall. You can do a simple test to check the mirror. Press your fingertip against the glass and push firmly enough to leave a fingerprint as you move your finger away. Study the fingerprint. If there is a small gap between the print and the mirror where the glass should be, then it's just a mirror. On a semi-transparent mirror, there will be no gap. Another way to check if your mirror is semi-transparent is simply to tap the glass. If someone is watching you from the other side, the mirror will make an empty sound. A double mirror needs a brighter light on the other side than on yours. Get close to it and cup your hands around your eyes. Do you see some light behind the mirror? If so, you might have an unwanted audience. Before you leave your room or go to bed, make sure every door is securely locked. By every door, I mean not only the entrance to the room, but also the door leading to the terrace, if you have one. You can bring a portable door lock with you for extra security if you're staying in. You could also start a little DIY project and wrap a belt or a bag strap around the arm that pushes the door shut. Buckle it up and wrap it around several times for an extra layer of protection. Another idea for when you're about to nap or go to sleep is to build a pyramid of stuff by the door. Glasses and mugs will do perfectly. If someone tries to get inside while you're sleeping, there'll be some serious noise. Intruders prefer to keep it low-key, so they're highly likely to give up on robbing you straight away. If you travel with some valuables and don't feel comfortable leaving them around the room, you could put them in the safe inside your room. But because those safes use passcodes instead of physical locks, someone from the hotel has to know the master code to unlock it, just in case. So, you can bring your own safe with you instead. You can find the ones looking like books on Amazon, for example. They're made of strong metal and textured paper. They come with a combination lock and have enough room to fit your passports, cash, and jewelry. In case you have to leave your laptop in the room and want to make sure no one plugs in a USB drive to steal your data, here's what you can do. Leave a bottle of water or some other item next to the USB port. Measure the distance. Let's say it's one thumb length away. For someone to plug in their device in the laptop, they need to move the bottle. You can take it one step further and drop a pen parallel to the laptop under a certain angle. You can measure the angle with your smartwatch or phone using the Compass app. Again, if someone moves it, you'll know. Even something as simple as a please do not disturb sign can help you figure out if someone entered your room while you were away. Make it look like you left in a rush and the sign accidentally stuck between the door and the door frame. If you come back and the sign is hanging freely, then someone must have ignored it and tried to disturb you. In that case, you can contact reception and ask to send someone to enter the room with you to keep you safe. If you care about the cleanliness of your room as much as you do about your belongings and your personal safety, this one's for you. Hotel housekeeping workers normally have up to 20 rooms to take care of on an 8-hour shift. It means they'll have no more than 30 minutes for your room. It gives them enough time to make the bed, clean the floors in the room and the bathroom, empty the trash bins, and dust all surfaces. But they rarely have the time to take care of smaller objects like light switches, door and drawer handles, and remotes. 
And yes, these are exactly the objects you'll be in contact with the most. They can actually have more germs than the toilet. So, if you want to be sure those germs won't land on your hands, bring enough antibacterial wipes to clean all those things before you touch them. Did you know that most break-ins take place in the middle of the day? The FBI says burglaries happen midday because people are outside the house. Don't let your home be an easy mark for theft. Here are 10 tips to protect your home and some security items you might need along the way. Number one on our list is portable door locks. They aren't just designed for regular houses. Let's say you stay in a rented house where other guests also come and go. You can carry one of these portable locks with you. Many rooms have secondary locking mechanisms besides the regular lock, like security chains attached to the door, but you shouldn't always rely on them. These mechanisms are only held by screws. It means they're easy to dislocate. There are many portable lock models, so what should you look for? Ease of use is the key for installation and removal in case of emergency. Most inward swing doors are suitable for these items. Add a lock is a good example. You can find it on Amazon. It's fairly inexpensive, has a versatile design, and most importantly, comes in one piece. It takes seconds to upgrade your safety. You insert the claws into the door's strike plate and then close the door. It'll be held in position with a handle. There you go. Burglars don't hang out in your house or bother stealing heavy stuff like TVs. They want to get in and out in under 10 minutes. What you should do is take some precautions to slow them down. Laminated glass is great for this. You should consider investing in it. Normal windows that are made with tempered glass can shatter easily, but laminated windows are like shields. They can crack but not break apart. Instead of making smashing noises and grabbing attention, the burglar will probably leave. The structure of laminated glass is different from the regular one. It holds the piece intact even after a strong impact. Laminated glass windows are 100 times stiffer and 5 times more durable than standard. What makes these types of glass so special? Firstly, it's made with layers. There are two layers of glass and there's a vinyl material in between that helps keep the two layers intact. As a bonus, laminated ones have a soundproofing feature. Two birds with one stone. The interlayer absorbs some of the outside noise. It's glass after all. Aren't we going to see the vinyl layer? That might be the question that popped into your head. Nope, laminated glass is transparent just like other types. Enjoy the crystal clear views while staying safe. I would say, but unfortunately, it's expensive to get these specifically manufactured burglar deterrent glasses. You can have professionals install a laminate film onto your standard windows, or you can even buy security film. They all work according to the same principle, but obviously these alternatives cannot be as strong as the laminated glass itself. The next few tips come from an ex-burglar, Michael Fraser. Now he's giving bits of advice on how to protect from theft. His first tip is quite interesting. Don't put a beware of the dog sticker if you have a dog. If a dog can walk around the house without triggering the alarm, so can a human. This is the way burglars think. Plus, many dogs get friendly in a short time unless they're specifically trained to catch strangers. Otherwise, they can easily be put in a room and, well, you know the rest. Bye-bye to precious items. Advertising your house for sale online is a standard procedure to attract potential buyers, but also thieves. With your innocent pics, burglars can have floor plans with virtual tours. They can easily spot the entry and escape routes. Sounds like a perfect plan to rob a house. Number five is buying a home security system. It helps prevent thefts and notifies you if that happens. According to the data, homes without a security system are almost three times more vulnerable to break-ins. There are numerous ones to choose from. Some are pricey, but luckily there are affordable options too. 
you don't even have to call professionals. This do-it-yourself security system from Amazon is an example of a budget-friendly gadget with useful features. These types of devices are designed to be easy to install. You'll be guided through an app for the software and for the product itself. Bonus, you won't have to deal with screws, tools, or drilling. They have fast emergency dispatch that can notify the authorities if you say so. Since it's easy to set up, it's perfect for short-term residents too. Remember I mentioned that if a dog can walk in the house, so can a thief? Well, technology is not in favor of thieves. These types of devices can now detect intruders and be friends with your pet. The sensors can be put in the window, doors, and corners, but still be adjusted to avoid fake alarms by the pets. Another device to add a layer of protection to you, especially in shared residences like dorms, is a doorstop alarm. These devices are very compact, so you can put them in your luggage and take them on your dream vacation. You can use it in your daily life. A doorstop alarm can be used on any door as long as you place it inside. It works as a door wedge, but it keeps the door closed. How does it work? When the alarm is triggered, it will keep the intruder outside the door and activate a noise alarm. It can wake the owner of the house or neighbors. This one, again, can be easily found on Amazon. Ex-Burglar Michael also recommends thinking like a thief. Ask yourself, how would I get in? It's a great starting exercise for discovering vulnerable spots. Walk around your home. Is there a window that can be easily opened? Oh wait, is it your laptop on the desk that can be seen from the street? Speaking of the street, if you buy a new electronic device like a TV or a computer, don't leave the empty cartons displayed near the trash container. This looks like an invitation to thieves. They will know that you have expensive electronics inside the house. Instead, break down the cardboard boxes and then put them away for recycling. Unfortunately, first floor windows are entry points in 23% of home break-ins. To prevent this, you can purchase a wireless alarm kit. When it comes to the front door, installing a double key deadbolt can be a solution. Similarly, motion sensor lighting does the job. Do you have blind spots around your home? Upgrade to a security camera with night vision. If you want to see what's happening inside your house rather than outside, you can get one of these cool security gadgets. Orbi Robotic Mobile Sphere is like a ball, but it has a camera inserted in it. It doesn't have a limited view. Imagine you're at the office and want to play with your dog. Your four-pod best friend can chase the ball at home while you're away controlling the device. Ah, okay, we're here to save your house from burglars, so I'll leave fun pet toys for another video. Here is a shocking truth about fences. Most people believe that fences are like guardians protecting their property. Sorry to break it to you, but even tall and solid ones aren't as secure as you believe. The number one rule of a thief is not to be caught. And if they broke into a house with fences at night, they'd be perfectly covered. Your neighbors can't see who that person is. You know, unless they have x-ray vision. The fences should be hard to climb. One of the points of having a fence is privacy. But I'm just saying metal, wire, and picket fences are harder for intruders to fly in. So, we cracked the burglar's code. Implementing the tips on our list might help you discourage and prevent burglary and keep you safe. Did you experience such unpleasant incidents? If so, do you have any other tips for fellow Brightsiders to watch out for? It happens every 43.8 seconds. I'm talking about car theft in the USA. Yep, every minute someone loses their precious vehicle to crooks. If you want to learn more about these heartbreaking stats, here you go. Over 800,000 car thefts were reported in the US in 2020 alone and Ford pickups win the award for the crook's choice, since it was the one most frequently stolen. Also, New Year's Day had the most thefts. Seems like we all need to keep an eye out for our cars. First things first, it's very unlikely that someone may steal your car while you're on the move. But once you park it, it gets way easier. So, you need to park responsibly. Yeah, sometimes you might need to walk a bit more, but it's worth it if it means leaving your car in a well-lit place. 
Improperly parked cars are often taken away by tow trucks. Turns out, not all of them are real. So, should you ever see one near your car, check whether it's real or fake. A real tow truck should at least have some branding on it, and its crew should be wearing a uniform. Remember I told you it's not that easy to steal your car while you're on the move? Sorry, but that's only partially true. Carjackers don't really care about the fact that you're sitting in your car. The trick here is simple. Even if you're inside your vehicle, always make sure to lock your doors. Carjackers often have shady schemes of how to lure car owners out of their vehicles. They may even set up a trap and sort of stage a car accident. So even if you see that your car has been bumped from behind, don't rush out of it instantly to check on it. Just wait a little bit to pull over. Make sure the place where you stop is safe and there are people around you. In case you get suspicious, it's better to call the police. If you're ready to shell out some money to protect your car, here's some info. You can install a remote car starter. It's not just a great thing for those who live in colder climates and who need to start their car beforehand. Its main advantage is that you can't drive away with a car started like this, since this mode doesn't allow you to shift gears. Any car has a vehicle identification number, or simply VIN. This one may seem pointless, but here's a trick. When thieves sell a stolen car, they do VIN switching. It's when they want to disguise a stolen vehicle and use another VIN from a similar car. But if you etch your VIN on each window of your vehicle, crooks will instantly see that you're interested in protecting your car. Plus, such a vehicle will seem spoiled for them. After all, they'd have to do the VIN switching, plus they'd have to come up with a plan on how to fix the windows as they have the VIN etched on them. They'll probably need to change the windows altogether, and that's pricey. So reselling such a car would appear too time-consuming for crooks, and they aren't willing to put in that much effort. Come on, these guys don't even work. They're way too lazy to deal with those windows. By the way, some specialists can do this etching for you, so you don't have to deal with it yourself. By the way, if you want to buy a used car, a VIN can help you a lot. Some cars are sort of cloned, which means their VIN isn't real, but was simply added to the plate manually. So you have to check all the documentation before buying a used car. Pay special attention to the DVLA V5 documents and make sure that the VIN there coincides with the VIN on the vehicle. Here's another protection gadget. It's called a smart car alarm, and its sound is even nastier than the sound of an alarm clock. It can do two things. First, it makes a super loud sound that can both scare away intruders and attract witnesses. Second, it can send you an alert in case you somehow don't hear the deafening sound it makes. There's another secret mechanism that can protect your car. You can install an emergency stop button that you can wire to the ignition, battery, fuel line, you name it. When you get out of the car, you simply need to flip the switch. Even if crooks steal your keys somehow, it won't help them. They need to find the switch to start the car first, and it's up to you where to hide that switch. We all know that the more security you have in your car, the better. Crooks don't like to mess with technologies, and the statistics prove it. Tesla, along with other high-tech cars, were the least stolen ones over the last few years. However, modern doesn't mean safe and crook-proof. Many cool vehicles have engine management diagnostic ports. Sounds super convenient, but there's a downside. These ports can help unlock and even start the vehicle. So if your car has such a feature, consider getting a lockable cover. Always check whether you've closed the windows before leaving your car. Even the smallest gap is enough for a crook to open the door and steal the car. Yeah, don't tell me it's obvious. I somehow see cars with open windows every single day. If a crook really wants to, they can simply smash a window with a heavy object or even a rock. See what I'm driving at? Try not to make crooks want to open your car. That means there shouldn't be any valuables visible. So please, no laptops or purses on the front seat. Hide them in the trunk or take them with you. There are many options. Just don't show thieves that there's something they can steal from your car. 
Keeping a spare key in the glove box isn't the best idea either. Crooks know where to look for it. It's really simple. They've opened the car, which isn't that complicated, and they just open up the glove box and they're free to drive. So let's say you still keep your valuables in the car and a spare key in the glove box because, you know, you like it that way. Well, consider installing a steering wheel lock. It's probably not that functional, but experts believe it's a working visual deterrent. Remember how thieves are sort of lazy and don't want to mess with various gadgets? Specialists claim that crooks are more likely to pass by a car that has a steering wheel lock on it. So even if a crook still wants to drive your car away, they won't be able to. Plus, it's not that easy to remove it. Now for the most obvious tip, it's CCTV. There's a variety of such cameras today. They have night vision modes, people detection functions, and really high resolution. Literally anything you might need. A real camera can help you watch your car 24 seven. But in case you don't feel like spending money on that, you can install a dummy and hope that the thieves won't figure it out. Okay, let's imagine the worst. Someone ignored all of these simple tips and got their car stolen. What should they do? First, they need to provide all the information to the police. So make sure you know the color. I know, it's easy. But please don't use complicated wording while describing the car color. Like, it's not moss, but rather dark green. You also need to know the year, make, and model. Make sure you remember all these. The police will also need to know your license plate number and VIN. If you don't remember the VIN by heart, write a note on your phone just in case. Oops, another burglary in the U.S. has just occurred. Wait another 22.6 seconds and there will be another one. Hey, no need to worry about your property. Forewarned, forearmed. Let's explore a few tips on how to protect your house. A mere sticker can contribute a lot to your house's safety. For instance, you can use a sticker that says you have a home security system, even if in reality you don't. It may not sound convincing enough, but still, burglars prefer not to mess with such houses. Just one more tip here. Make sure the sticker looks true to life, so a makeshift sign won't do. It's better to fork out some money and grab a real looking sticker. Another smart trick is to leave a pair of really large shoes on the porch so that the burglars could clearly see them. It will make them think someone big and dangerous lives there and they won't fancy meeting them. Right, now let's inspect your door. I hope you don't leave the keys under the doormat. The only things you can leave under the mat are the cookies or chips. This is a fun way to see if someone was visiting you while you were away. However, the trick doesn't give you a 100% guarantee. It might be a mailman, a delivery guy who got the wrong door, or even a random dog hanging around your porch. Yeah, cookies feel better in your stomach, not under the doormat. Okay, you're back home from work. It was a tough day and you're tired. You leave the keys in the keyhole and completely forget about it. Right, the main thing is that you've locked the door and the keys are inside. But who said there is no burglar in the bushes targeting your house? Technically, it might be impossible to insert a dupe and get in if there's a key in the keyhole. But these guys are well equipped and have a whole assortment of hooks to lure the key out. You know what happens next? They can seep into your house as silently as ninjas and grab all your valuables while you're peacefully sleeping. A lock that can only be closed from the inside and can't be opened from the outside seems like a good solution. When moving to a new place, even if you didn't buy it, but rent it, make sure to change the locks. Who knows how many copies of those keys there are? As for renting, you never know who lived there before you moved in. Also, if for some reason you accidentally left your keys in the front door for some time, the best thing to do is to change the lock. Yeah, probably nothing bad will happen, but still, it's better to play it safe. Plus, not only should you stop leaving the keys in the door, but you also shouldn't leave them on display. Maybe it's better to bring the keys to the living room instead of keeping them near the front door. Sometimes, burglars can use not only your door, but your window too. Mind your trash, especially if you throw away some pricey stuff packaging. 
Don't let the thieves know what you purchased and how much you paid for it. Also, your trash may contain some essential information about your personal data, credit card details, and so much more. Keep an eye on your mailbox. Make sure you have a lock on it. Thing is, burglars may be quite interested in your mail contents, so the secret is simple. Keep the mailbox locked and make sure you shred any personal data related papers. Now let's inspect your front lawn. Hey, I can see something compromising. I'm talking about these large bushes. Yeah, I know you don't have time to trim them. The larger they get, the more space there is for the burglars to hide. Plus, if someone sees untrimmed shrubs and trees in the front yard, they might think nobody's home. You see the point, right? Okay, let's say you ignored all the previous tips and burglars broke into your house. The most interesting thing for them is surely cash. If you don't have any cash at home, you can skip this tip. But if you have valuables, get creative. Cash can be stuffed into a plastic bag and hidden in a large container with some leftovers. Also, you can place that plastic bag into an old detergent bottle you keep in the storeroom or the kitchen. Burglars aren't likely to look for your stash there. A couple of don'ts here. Hiding cash or jewels in a prescription pills container isn't that smart. And yeah, a freezer isn't the best option either. Many burglars like to check it in the first place. Time to see if you keep your keys right. If you keep your car and house keys together, you might want to reconsider it. First off, imagine you lose them and burglars somehow know where you live. Not only will they grab what they want, but they'll also have a vehicle to transport all your hard-earned belongings. Keep an eye on your garage keys, especially if it's possible to sneak into your house through your garage. Even if it isn't, who said there are no valuables in the garage? However, there are no limits whatsoever for burglars. They can sneak into houses even through small windows. The reason why they prefer doors is that it's the safest way. While squeezing through the window can get scratches, and it's not that they don't want to spoil their looks. The thing is, if they leave their DNA, they can be traced. However, crooks are careful about not leaving their traces. For instance, a report from England claims only about 3% of burglars leave forensic evidence. To protect yourself at night, there are several options. Number one, insert a large paper clip or a bobby pin inside the keyhole. You can use a spare pair of keys if you have them. This way, you'll make it extremely hard, if not impossible, for the burglars to use the key dupes. Number two, barricading is an option. It can be a heavy chair, a bookshelf, you name it. I mean, why not if it makes you feel safe? If your door opens outwardly, a jammer could do a great job for you. A chair can be super handy. Secure it under the doorknob. It's not the most powerful security system, but at least it does its job. Binding the doorknobs or handles together can be an option too. A dummy security camera can protect you during the day and night. Again, burglars are not as fearless as they may seem. If you have a real CCTV, make sure the crooks don't deactivate it. So place it in some hard to get place. If you're ready to fork out some money for protection, then the motion sensor light is exactly what you need. Crooks like dim spots, and once they approach your place, they'll be frightened off by the bright light. This solution works as long as the burglars know you're home. In case they're sure you're away, it's way less efficient. TV and radio timers are another trick. With their help, you can imitate your home even if you're not. A perfect match for the motion sensor light. This trick can help outsmart some burglars, but again, it doesn't give a 100% guarantee. Some of them aren't afraid to break in, even if the TV's on. What about live alarm systems? This can be real or fake too. I'm talking about dogs. Remember the trick with the boots? You can do the same with a dog if you don't have one. Leave a large bowl on the porch, but make sure it all looks real. I mean, the bowl should not look untouched and brand new. Hey, do you know all your neighbors? If not, it's high time you baked some cookies and visited them to know them better. 
First, the crooks don't really like to operate in areas where few people know each other and care for each other. This way, their chances of being spotted and reported are extremely high. So, a sort of neighborhood watch is a perfect way to protect your house. And who knows? Find new friends. Burglaries are on the rise in your neighborhood, and you have concerns about whether your house might be vulnerable. You have no surveillance system, so tonight, you're placing some foil over the front door handle before you go to bed. This will help identify if someone sneakily tries to enter while you sleep. You wake up the next morning, and it appears the foil is slightly ripped. Someone has been here, and they're sure to return. Another option is to put a mug on the doorknob. When the knob turns, the mug will fall, causing a noise to wake you up and hopefully deter the intruder. Your main concern is that a tradesman stopped by recently. He said that he was working next door and asked to use your toilet. You refused and felt bad at the time for being rude, but it was a very smart move. About 60% of burglaries in the USA are made by someone you know or have met before. That tradesman, while going to the bathroom, could have adjusted something in your house to make their return entry a little easier. They may have wanted to take a closer look at what security system is installed, check the structural integrity of your home, and found out what valuable loot you might have. Finally, today you're going on vacation. You need to prepare your house and make it as safe as possible. A full post box is the first thing a robber will look for in a target. Your neighbor will need to take your mail while you're away. A well-manicured property is a clear sign that you are always there. You've always kept your lawn mown and hedges trimmed, so you will need to arrange for someone to do this while you're away. If it was winter, any untouched snow around your house would also make it a target. Having a neighbor make pretend footprints that show recent activity will also provide a deterrent. There are many types of hedges that act as a great first defense. Luckily, you have sharp-leaved shrubs along your fences. If someone jumps into your property and lands on a sharp or spiky bush, they will immediately cry out in discomfort. This will alert your neighbors of an intruder. And the foliage will also catch fragments of clothing that could be used as evidence later. In preparation for your trip the week before, you opened and closed your curtains at random times throughout the day. You made sure there were no clear patterns, so it won't matter if they're left open while you're away, just in case someone was scouting your property. Burglars spend several days walking or driving through neighborhoods, identifying the behaviors of each house. One thing they don't really like is a neighborhood watch. Criminals do their research before they start scouting and will avoid these areas. Something for you to organize when you get back. Now, move all your expensive electronics away from the windows so there's nothing of value in clear view. Put them inside a cupboard or a concealed room. Don't worry about TVs. They're too large and take effort to move. The criminals are more interested in the smaller devices, like an iPad and gaming devices. Put your small expensive items, like jewelry, in boxes and hide them away in a secret location. Surprisingly, a kid's room is a good spot. Burglars have admitted to never going into them, as there's nothing of value in toys. Take photos of all the serial numbers on your electronic devices and create an inventory for insurance purposes. 95% of break-ins are done by force, so it's time to reinforce your windows and doors. You can make it even more difficult for the crooks. Remove all stools, chairs, and ladders in the backyard and put them into your garage. Otherwise, they will help provide easier access points to higher entrances, like the air conditioner box. This is one of their favorites. Without a way to reinforce it, it's easy to tear off and creates an entrance. Don't make it easier for them with a step up. Burglars can break down a weak door within one minute. Install a metal frame instead of wood for more support. 
the hinges and lock should have adequate strength to withstand being kicked long enough until they give up. With the lock as the remaining weak spot, this can easily be picked by an experienced thief. A simple protection lock that holds it in place will make sure it won't budge. The hinges on your garage door swing outwards, which makes it vulnerable and can be accessed by taking the pins out of the hinges. Replace them with tamper-proof pins so they can't be removed. And lastly, the garage overhead door is one of the first places a burglar looks to access. They don't have a lock that fully secures them. Attach a padlock on the latch connecting it to the track, holding it in place. Your garage door doesn't have this option, so drill a hole in the track just above one of the rollers and attach a padlock. Robbers are scared of dogs, the territorial and loyal guardians of the house. A survey found that most houses burgled didn't have dogs because thieves don't want to draw attention during a heist. Unfortunately, you don't own one, but just placing a dog bowl outside the front door will discourage them. The burglars have adapted their craft with technology. Four out of five criminals use social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Google Maps to find their targets. Even sharing a photo with a house key in it is enough for a burglar to create their own key by zooming in and taking the exact measurements. Make sure your wireless network is secure and use a new, much stronger password while away. You're not only vulnerable to physical objects being stolen, valuable data like passwords and access codes can be taken through your network. And there's also the threat of infecting devices through malicious malware. You can also remove the vision of your house completely from Google Maps. Type in your home address, find the street view of your residence, press the options button and select report a problem. You'll be taken to a screen with an image of your home with the option to move a red square to cover your property. Request it to be blurred under the option My Home and enter your exact address. It will only take a couple of days to be processed. Don't leave the radio on while away. It won't help. Through the burglar's method of scouting houses, they take note of radio and TV sounds. When they return, they check if they're still on, which just makes it easier to confirm that no one's home. An alternative option to show active presence at home is by making your own audio, something that plays ambient noises randomly throughout the day, with footsteps, conversations, and a dog barking. Leaving your lights on is also not a good idea. Someone spying will notice your house easier, especially at night, and you'll be further robbed on your electricity bill. You're just about ready to leave on your vacation, and need to take the trash out. If you have some large boxes, break them down so they can fit inside the bin. Hide any clues about what valuables you recently received. Last check, all the doors are locked and no windows are left open. Now you can finally enjoy your trip. But as you enjoy yourself in your picturesque location, leave any snaps on your phone while you're over there and post them online only when you return. If you do share your photos while you're away, it will have made all your preparations pointless. Every criminal in the area will know you're not home. But with 2.5 million houses burgled annually in the USA, a house without a modern security system is 300% more likely to be broken into. When you get back from your break, it will be a great idea to install one. You park your car in a dark alley, lock it, and leave it for just a couple of minutes to go grab a coffee. When you come back, your beloved vehicle is no longer there. A siren sounds. Oh, wait, that was the alarm. Phew. Luckily, that was all just a dream, and you can help it to never come true. First of all, you can install a steering wheel lock in your car. It can either be a long metal rod stretched over the steering wheel 
or a chain lock connected to the seatbelt buckle. Both options are good to slow down the bad guys that might break into your vehicle, but don't make it 100% thief-proof. The thieves can just cut the steering wheel or even the lock, so you need to add some extra layers of protection to be sure. Criminals like to use gadgets that catch signals and help them steal cars without a key. For example, if the car is parked in a garage of a private house or under the windows of a multi-story building, the keys are accessible through the radio device. Thieves can easily intercept the signal, and the owners of the car won't notice anything. To protect your keys from relay attacks when they're stored at home, use something metallic. You can simply wrap the keys in foil to block the radio signals or keep them in a safe metal box. Park in areas that are well lit and have security cameras. Building entrances and parking lots are your best choice. An isolated garage isn't always the best idea because it could put you personally at risk. So if you do park in one of those, stay close to the attendant or where security cameras can see you. Keep the wheels turned towards the curb whenever you park. It will make it way harder for thieves to try to tow the auto with a tow truck. To steal a car, a criminal will have to make some extra maneuvers. It takes time and effort and can demotivate the bad guys. In many cases, it's not your car the bad guys are after. It's that shiny new laptop you dropped in the front seat or your designer purse that looks like it's stuffed with valuables. Things like that are hard to resist and often lead to a break-in. So take an extra moment to hide your belongings in the trunk and your vehicle will be less tempting for criminals. Don't just jump out of the car, even if it's literally for a moment to buy something. If you need to get out, always stop the engine first, close the windows, and lock the doors. Storing your vehicle registration in the car is a good way to make the lives of thieves easier. They can present it to police officers in case they get pulled over. Your insurance information and VIN can help them get new keys to unlock the car no problem. If you aren't the only person using the car, find some secret place to hide the registration and only tell the people you trust 100% about it. You can also take a photo of your title registration and insurance information and store them on your smartphone. Another option is to make copies of those important docs and keep them with you. Mark your windshields, windows, and mirrors with a VIN number, which is the identification number of the vehicle. This service won't cost you a lot, but will demotivate the bad guys. They'll have to spend money to change the marked glass, and they will think twice if they want to invest in your vehicle. You can also play spy and leave marks on different parts of the car with an invisible pen or cover it in micro dots with your ID details. This won't stop thieves, but it will make it easier to track the vehicle if it gets stolen. If you know that you'll have to leave the car somewhere new and you don't feel like it's a safe place, hide an old switched on phone or tablet in it. Make sure you have a way to track it. Then, the Find My Phone feature will help you locate the phone and the car in a matter of seconds. You can either get a cheap data plan for real-time tracking or rely on GPS. It should work even without a SIM card. Protect your side mirrors from thieves with special covers. You can find models that come with locks made from anti-cut materials. The cover will also protect your side mirrors from scratches and scruffs and extend their lifespan. Plus, you can go creative and choose covers with your favorite team's logo or something else that's important to you. Not a bad idea to customize your vehicle on a budget, right? Car thieves use different schemes to distract your attention. A piece of paper stuck to the rearview window, a plastic bottle over the wheel, or a shirt on the trunk of your car. These and other small things will likely get you out of the car. The bad guys can also pretend to be nice and helpful and to tell you to pull over because there's something under your car. The idea here is, again, to get you out of your car and let them steal it. So instead of going out, close the windows, lock the car doors, and don't go out if there's someone suspicious hanging around. Criminals aren't the only bad guys who can do your vehicle harm. Harsh winter weather can be a problem too. 
If you don't want to find your wipers stuck to the windshield and scrape them off every morning, leave them up when you're not driving. You probably heard it's a bad idea because it ruins the arm spring and can tempt someone to steal your wipers. Don't worry, the springs don't lose their elasticity, and there aren't really many people who are after your wiper blades. In case you forget to put the wipers up and find them safely stuck to your windshield, try running the AC. Cold air will defrost the windows just like warm air. It works by dehumidifying the air. If your lock is frozen and you can't get inside your own car, treat it with some hand sanitizer. That substance can melt the ice without a problem. To prevent your windshield from getting frosty, mix three parts vinegar and one part water and spray that solution on the windows overnight. It'll save you some scraping time in the morning. Always keep your gas tank more than half full in cold weather. Moist air will be happy to fill any empty space above the fuel in your tank. And that air will condense to water in the cold. Water is denser than gasoline, so it settles at the bottom of your tank. When enough of it accumulates, it'll go through the fuel line to the engine, and that's not really good. To protect your favorite car from rust, wash your vehicle regularly. Something as simple as that can be the difference because dirt damages the protective layer of clear coat and paint and makes it easier for rust to sneak in. Don't forget to wash the undercarriage of the car and the wheel wells. Make sure the car paint isn't chipping or peeling. You need that layer to protect your vehicle from the elements. In the cold season, salt from the road can also cause some rust spots. To avoid that, you should at least rinse the car every week, even in the winter. And don't forget to wax it at least twice a year. That's another good way to keep your paint looking good as new and protect it from UV rays. One more thing is to keep the inside of the car clean. If you spill something inside, always mop up the liquid. You don't want it to seep further and hit the metal parts. This is exactly how rust forms. You step out the front door and get in the car. No way around it. There's a chore to be done, and it's not going to be enjoyable. You need groceries. You only needed toilet paper and some oranges, but somehow, you left the store with four bags of groceries. It happens. Just gotta put them in the trunk. Oh wait, it's full! There's a bunch of old stuff in there that you were gonna donate. You're not gonna dump your groceries in the back seat either. They might tip over. Here's the solution. Grab yourself a couple of snap hooks. Take your headrest and bring it up just a bit. Now you have space to place the hooks on those metal bits. Now just open the hooks and hang up your bags. Perfect! Oh, you like that? Good, here's some more knowledge for you to make your life as a driver a bit easier. We've all felt those nasty hot sunny days. Days when you always wish you had a drink in your hand. Well, today is one of those days. At the store, you bought a Coke, the kind you need a bottle opener for. The only problem is, you don't have one. Don't fret, you see these metal things on the seatbelt? They keep you safe, but they're also the exact shape of a bottle opener. Easy. Still got some old DVD cases lying around? Dust one off and get ready to make a sweet car stereo cover. Here's what you do. Grab a pair of scissors and cut off the edges. The idea is to create a flat, almost paper-like cover. The rest is easy. You go down to your car with your new do-it-yourself cover, cut off any extra bits, and place it under the stereo system so it doesn't fall out. Then, all you need to do is close it. Keeps it nice and clean. Plus, no one will get any bad ideas. You're out for a drive, but you left your phone holder at home. Ugh, nuts. Maybe you need a little GPS. Maybe you need to make some calls or record your latest Watch Me Drive Around vlog. So, you need to improvise a little. Reach under the seat and pull out some elastic bands. You're obviously not using them for anything. None down there? Check the glove box. Bingo! Next, 
Wrap one or two bands tightly around the air vent, then shove your phone in the middle. If you do it right, you'll have a do-it-yourself phone holder for when you're in a pinch. If you do it wrong, well, hello modern art. If you've just got your driver's license, or even a new car, and you're not quite familiar with the feel of it yet, there's a simple trick you can use to get the hang of your new wheels. Take a plastic bottle and place it in front of your car. Then, just drive over the bottle a couple of times, forward and backwards. This will help you get a feel for exactly where the wheels are, and how big the front of your car is. Okay, so you feel like you've got a hidden artsy side, but you're afraid that you've got no talent. What you need is the perfect art partner, your car. Take a couple of tiny paint bottles and place them in a row, right there on your driveway. Then, prop up a blank canvas right in front of them. You can use a huge piece of cardboard, a stretched out bed sheet, or some nice blank paper. Now, here's the fun part. Get back in the car, start the engine, and drive over them. They'll splash paint all over the canvas and create unique and abstract art. Congratulations, you're officially an artist. When you're driving cross country, your biggest enemy might be your eyelids. They keep drooping down. If this is you, next time you go on a road trip, pack an air mattress. Feeling a bit drowsy on the road? Pull over somewhere safe, set up your air mattress in the back seat, and take a power nap. You'll wake up feeling good as new, ready to hit the road again. You can even just leave the mattress back there, ready for when you want to rest your head again. If you're traveling with a buddy, they might feel sleepy during the long trip too. This one's a bit easier. Get your car one of those fluffy seat belt covers. Your co-pilot can just tilt their head to the side and take a nap. Let's just hope they don't snore. Your mirrors might be too small to show you exactly what you need to see on the road. Those blind spots can be annoying, and you can end up with a sore neck from all that twisting around every time you change lanes. With a new and improved 180-degree mirror, you won't have to keep doing your best owl impression. Picture this. You've now got four people in the car. Your buddy next to you, sleeping on that awesome seatbelt cover you installed, and two other friends bored out of their minds in the back seat, playing with their phones. Before the trip, because you're a good host, you charge up your tablet so that they can watch a movie or something. But who's going to want to hold the tablet up for two whole hours? Just use one of these ready-to-go tablet holders that you can hook onto the front seat. It's like one of those touchscreens that they have on the new airplanes. Hundreds of movies to choose from, private and personal. What a great host! And those backseat passengers deserve even more comfort. Whip out some suction cups and make some extra storage. Your friends didn't even know they needed it. They can hang up some cloth to block the sun. A bag of chips, a portable fan. It's perfect. Until you accidentally roll down their window. The trunk. It's more like a luggage volcano than a tidy closet. It's messy. So why not improvise a do-it-yourself pop-up divider system to keep things tidy? You can use wood or just some trusty cardboard boxes. One section for food, one for useless papers, one for luggage, and one for that road map you haven't used in 10 years. Am I forgetting something? If you're on a long drive, your back might start to hurt. And, oh man, you forgot to pack your air mattress. Just chuck a lumbar back support pillow under your seat and pull it out when you're feeling sore. Not all of us are great parkers, let's face it. You might have scraped your car a little now and then when you weren't being too careful. Pick up a few of those awesome rubber chickens that squawk when you squeeze them. Warning, you will look ridiculous, but you'll never scratch your car up again. Okay, get them out before parking and hook them to the front and back corners of your car. When you get too close to a poster wall or someone else's car, the chickens will belt out their epic song. And if you keep going anyway, they'll act as a soft bumper to protect your paint job. You made it home. The trip was a success. And now your car is seriously dirty. There's a few spots that you just can't clean. That's okay. Grab yourself a little slime. Yeah, you heard that right. Slime. Smear it on those spots where the muck just won't come off. That gunk will stick to the other gunk. 
Now you just wipe it all off. Don't know what slime is? You're in for a fun evening on YouTube. Do you have a fluffy friend that usually rides around with you in the back? Sure, it keeps you company, but wow, does it shed. Look at all that fur it left you as a thank you present. Uh, thanks. You love your dog, but come on, why can't they just shed in the backyard? Okay, dog rant over. Grab yourself a back seat cover, aka a blanket, long enough to cover the seat and the backrest. So even if your canine buddy moves around, all that extra hair goes right on the cover. Just remember to give it its own laundry cycle. You don't want hair all over your clean clothes. Lucky iPhone users, beware! Your favorite gadget sometimes gets viruses too. One day, you may see an ad notification from your calendar. And no matter how much time you spend on deleting those events, they just won't disappear. To put an end to this misadventure, go to Settings, Calendar, Accounts, and delete all of them except for iCloud and Gmail ones. There may be really few viruses for iPhone, but you're never protected from juice jacking. If you don't want to be the one whose data accidentally leaked, public chargers are a no-go. Airport, cafe, public transport, you name it. It only concerns the USB chargers. A good old adapter won't let you down. Be scrupulous about various permissions, too. Make sure the apps you download are from a protected source and aren't fake. There are many shortcuts available on the internet, but most of them aren't safe. Read the app reviews before downloading. Yeah, sounds obvious, but it does help save both your time and phone. Going stealthy is vital for your privacy. If you don't have a special screen protector, just adjust the brightness level. It's harder for anyone to see your past this way. Airplane mode isn't only great for keeping your charge, but also at keeping your data safe. The logic is simple. If the phone is offline, how can anyone get your data? The iPhone runs out of charge really fast when it's cold because of the aluminum case. Aluminum gets cold way faster than plastic. By the way, an Android runs out of charge slower just because most Android phones have plastic cases. And nope, there's no remedy or piece of advice. Sorry, guys. It happens to anyone, at least. If you accidentally dropped your phone in the snow or just left it outside and it got frozen, don't charge it the very same moment you bring it back. Leave it for 20 to 30 minutes to get a bit warmer. Then you might want to get a water eject shortcut. It's not set by default, but you can easily get one by just Googling it. There are also a lot of free apps that eject the water from the dynamics with the power of sound. If you can't delete a certain app for some reason, check your settings. Go to Settings, Screen Time, Content, and Privacy Restrictions. In iTunes and App Store purchases, there should be a tick on Don't Allow. Change it for Allow, and now you can delete any app. One of the most bugging problems for all iPhone users is when you run out of memory. Even if you delete the photos, there's still not enough space. Go to Settings, iPhone Storage, and make sure that recently deleted photos are actually deleted. If not, delete them in the Storage section. Keyboards have their secrets, too. To end a sentence with a period and start a new sentence, just tap the Space button twice. Also, if you prefer typing holding the phone with one hand only, choose the right keyboard. Whenever you change the language, there are three keyboard icons below. The left one is for the left hand only, the central is for both hands, and the right one is… ta-da! For the right hand only. What a surprise! If you tap the uppercase button twice, you'll get caps lock. Many letters also have hidden symbols. If you hold your finger on a button, you'll see them. Now you can type en français, ha <laughs> ha, respecting all the characters. Okay, and if you accidentally deleted that long message you've been trying to write, just shake your phone. It'll activate the undo typing function. Hold the space button in the notes, or whatever text you're dealing with. This way, you can easily slide across the keyboard to get to any part of the text. The note drawings can be nice and smooth, even if you don't have a stylus. When you finish your drawing, hold it for a second with your finger iPhone will automatically make it look better. No more curved lines. 
slow Wi-Fi can be really annoying, but your gadget knows how to handle it. Go to your Wi-Fi settings and see if the data saver mode is on. If not, just tap the slider and voila! Now you're surfing the net at a completely different speed. Sooner or later, any phone gets slower, even if it used to be a brand new 256 GB iPhone. In this case, you just need to clear the RAM. Turn on the assistive touch, it'll be of great help. Then squeeze the power button, and before sliding the turn off menu, press the home button on the assistive touch. Your RAM is as good as new now. Assistive Touch can also help you set new functions to simple tabs. Go to Settings, General, Accessibility, and in the Assistive Touch section, you can change any commands in the Custom Actions menu. For a double tap, I chose the screenshot, since a combination of Home plus Power button seems a bit inconvenient. To make a screenshot, tap the Accessibility menu circle twice. To change the battery icon color, Go to Accessibility, choose Display and Text Size, and slide the Smart Invert button. The battery icon color turns blue now. If you increase the contrast, it will get a lighter blue shade. When your phone is on charge, the indicator will turn purple. Ooh, magic! To make your iPhone louder, go to Settings, Music, and find the equalizer. It's called EQ in the menu. Late night option will make your phone somewhat 20% louder than it used to be. Louder? At night? Really? To record a video without being noticed, go to the camera. Start video recording. Go back to the notification center, the video will be recorded, but it won't be seen on the screen. Hey, why do you even want to do that? Just because you can? Hmm. You can also set a unique vibration for any of your contacts. Go to Settings, Sounds, and open the ringtone settings. You usually have the default vibration, but if you scroll down a bit, you're going to see the Custom section. Tap any rhythm that you like and save it. You can set it for any of your contacts. I know, you must have dozens of tabs in your browser, or probably a hundred, at least I do. To close them all in one touch, hold the Done button in the lower left corner and choose the Close All X tabs. I closed 336 last time. Eh, That's insane. If you accidentally closed all the tabs and need to go back to some of the recent ones, hold the plus button in the middle. It'll open the list of recently closed tabs, so all you gotta do is scroll down, hoping to find the one you didn't want to close. iPhones may not have the most endurable batteries, but they beat everyone when it comes to photo quality. Turn on the grid in the camera settings, go to General, choose Camera, to enable the grid. It can help you make better compositions in the photo. By the way, people with iPhones don't need a separate app for QR readers, since all the iPhones have them built in. Turn on the camera and point the camera to the code. You'll see the pop-up window on the top of the screen. Tap the window, and you'll go straight to the browser to whatever link the QR code had. If it doesn't work, enable the Scan QR Codes function in the camera settings. If you need to find some special word combination when you're reading an online article, go to the search bar and type the word you're interested in. You're going to see three sections. Google search, and eh, don't need it. Bookmarks and history, don't need it. And on this page, tap here. The word you need is going to be highlighted with yellow, Plus, there will be a special navigation bar on the bottom with the arrows up and down to look for the keyword easily. If you like writing long, romantic letters in your notes but don't want anyone to read them, then set a pass to any of your notes. There are two ways how to do that, depending on what iPhone model you have. For instance, for iPhone 6, you got to slide from right to left, and you'll see three icons – lock, folder, and bin. Use the bin if the romantic letter is bad, and the lock to protect it from peaky eyes. Set the pass, but make sure you actually remember it. You can't delete the pass. If this one didn't work, just tap and hold the note itself, and you'll see the password bar in the dropping menu. Set the pass, and from now on, no one's gonna know about romantic letters to Juliet that you've been writing all night long. Good night, Romeo. If you think a deadbolt lock will stop a home intruder, Don't be fooled. 60% of burglaries happen through forced entry, so these people definitely know how to get into your home. 
even when it's all locked up. As for 30% of home invasions, they involve an intruder just coming right in through an unlocked door or window. 65% of all burglaries happen between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., exactly when you're at work. Before executing a break-in, an experienced burglar spends days, if not weeks, casing the place. They study your schedule and daily routine so they'll know exactly when you'll be gone and for how long. They find this information out by watching you from afar or by using some other tricks of the trade. One of the most popular things burglars are doing nowadays is tying a thread on the front door handle and fixing it to the nearby wall or door frame. This thread is so thin that a casual onlooker won't even notice it. By examining the thread, burglars can figure out the pattern of your life. It may reveal to them when you leave for work, go to the gym, head out for a weekend getaway, and of course, when you come back home. With this information in hand, they can plan the perfect break-in. Experienced burglars have a checklist of easy target homes. First, you leave your doors or windows unlocked. Locking your house up seems like a no-brainer here, yet so many people don't do it. They may be lulled into a false sense of security by their tall fence or quiet neighborhood. Or perhaps they think, I'm just making a quick run to the corner store. What could possibly happen in five minutes? Believe it or not, this is more than enough time for a skilled burglar to get in, grab your valuables, and make their getaway. Your house is empty during the day. There's a common misconception that burglaries happen at night, but that's when most people are at home. This increases a burglar's risk of getting caught. It's much safer for them to operate during the day when everybody's at work or school. If you constantly share pictures and posts on social media about your expensive things or extravagant vacations, don't be surprised if one day you find some valuables missing from your home. There are certain things you can do to make yourself less of a burglary target. Nothing beats a home security system and surveillance. If a criminal notices an alarm and an operating camera, they'll most likely cross your home off their list of potential targets. Surprisingly, just a beware of dog sign can prevent burglary. It's even better if you have an actual dog, though. That tall fence and thick shrubbery that provide your home with some privacy can work against you. Sure, your neighbors can't see what you're up to in your backyard, but they also won't be able to notice if some dishonest citizen invites themselves into your house while you're away. Consider opening up the area around your home so that it doesn't seem so isolated. Are you one of those people who keep their wallet and car keys in a bowl near the front door? Yes, it's really convenient to have everything right there as you're heading out. But if a burglar breaks into your house during the night, nothing will be easier for them than to grab your valuables and quietly sneak away. The best place to keep your car keys and wallet at night is near your bed. Stay safe out there. In the US, one burglary happens every 18 seconds. It takes an experienced burglar between 90 seconds and 12 minutes to grab everything they need and get out of there before they get caught. You've probably heard that when a burglar decides which house to target, they start by casing it. This means they watch the owners, find out information about their routine, and determine the best time to enter their home. One of the tricks thieves use to gather information about your routine is so simple that you might not even give it a second thought. But the next time you hear a quiet crunch under your shoe as you're unlocking the front door, stop and check what it is. <laughs> Chances are, you'll find yourself face to face with a crushed cookie. If that's the case, it's your clue that something has gone terribly wrong. This is a pretty effective tool burglars use to find out if you've left on a trip or when exactly you come home every day. A cookie is such an innocent little thing that people don't usually give it much thought, if they even notice it at all. Many probably assume they just crushed a bug under the mat. You arrive home, step on the cookie, cookie, make it crumble, and automatically reveal all your secrets to burglars. They know for sure if the house is lived in and can also figure out the homeowner's schedule. Things get even worse if you're away for a while. The cookie under the doormat remains intact, thus alerting criminals that the house is perfect for a break-in. To decrease your chances of a burglar dropping some cookies under your doormat, don't announce everything on social media. You won't believe how many criminals today use it to gather information. Don't post any details about your vacation plans. If you're eager to share your amazing photos from the beach, do it after you get back home. Check your privacy settings every time you post something when you're away from home. It's all too simple for a thief to figure out that your house is empty at the moment if you're ranting online about how crowded these stores are on Black Friday. 
Get to know your neighbors. If you build a strong network around you in your community, bad guys consider your neighborhood too high of a risk. Every time you go away, inform your neighbors. Ask them to text or call you if they notice anything suspicious going on around your house. You can do the same for them next time they go on a trip. Create the impression that there's somebody at home even when you're away. Use the TV and radio. Leave them on when you're away. The sound of voices will most likely scare burglars away, even if that cookie is still whole. One of the most obvious signs that a homeowner has gone away for a while is a pile of newspapers and mail piling up at the front door. Ask somebody, a neighbor, a relative, or a friend to stop by regularly and pick it all up. If there is nobody who can do you this favor, place your mail on hold. You can do this at your local post office. Another thing that can give away your prolonged absence is an unkempt lawn with tall grass. Before going away, hire somebody to mow your yard regularly and keep the lawn tidy. Keep a sharp eye and stay safe. Every year, there are about two and a half million burglaries. That's one every 13 seconds. And the one thing any burglar wants to know all about when targeting your house, you. What valuables you have, what you buy, where you travel, your schedule, any and everything. Your doorbell rings, you answer it, and nobody's on the other side. Before you blame those neighborhood pranksters again, consider this. Someone could be checking to see if you're home. Same goes for any strange calls you get with nobody on the other line. On that note, don't just open the door at any knock or ring. Verify who's on the other side first. If they say they're from your utility company, rental office, or city services, ask them for ID and call the company to get it checked. Even if you have a video doorbell, anybody can buy any uniform these days. Don't go based on looks alone. A seemingly innocent flyer or ad under the doormat can also mean your house is a target. If it's still there the next day, it can make burglars think that nobody's home. Any person who finds some junk mail under their feet will throw it away, right? They have clever ways of finding out if you have an alarm system, what kind of doors and windows you have, if you have a dog, where you like to go on vacation, and so on. If you feel uncomfortable or suspicious about weird questions some stranger asks you, go with your gut and don't overshare. Know that something's not right if somebody's taking pics of your house and car. They might even try to be sneaky about it, like pretending they're taking a selfie or talking on the phone as they snap the pic. If you don't trust random photographers, stay cool and explain that you don't want them to do it and that it's your private property. Burglars might also stage some accident just to lure you out of your house. A fake utility worker can claim there's a gas or water leak. You leave the room for a couple of minutes, but it's already too late. An experienced burglar can get what they need in as little as 90 seconds. Always validate the identity of strangers showing up like this. Just call your utility provider. Beware if you see some sticker or paint on your door. Sure, these could just be coincidental nuisances, but it can also be a sign that someone wants to mark your house and set it apart from the rest. Get rid of it as soon as you can. Be careful when you sell your car or any other big price items. Delete the ads you posted as soon as you sell it. Many burglars call and pretend to be interested, asking if you still have it, saying, no, sold it already, will let them know you've just gotten a lot of money. Even if you spent it already, this person might like to break in and find out for themselves. Wait, can you hear that? Sounds like someone's knocking on your door, and you aren't expecting anyone. Well, maybe that's just your neighbor come to ask for some garden tools again. You get up to go downstairs, but then you hear the noise of metal scratching in the keyhole. You stop, frozen in fear. Seconds later, you can hear the door clicking. The problem is that you live alone. First, let's make sure there really is someone in the house. But you should be very quiet in case there's a burglar. Look outside the house to search for traces. Can you see anything suspicious? Is there an unknown vehicle close to your house? Maybe you can spot some footsteps or broken window. Was the fence gate open? There might also be hints inside the house.
but be careful if you're looking for them. Make sure you can't be seen. Maybe there's some lights off that are usually on. Or maybe there's some mud on the floor that wasn't there before. Listen carefully to the sounds. Maybe you can hear some footsteps or movement, or the creak of a door. Wait, did you hear it? Looks like someone bumped into your tea table. Okay, it looks like there really is someone in your house. So your next step is to try to get out of the house to be safe. If it's possible, leave altogether. Both the front door or the back door or even a window works. If it's a bit risky, you might want to try and escape. An injury is nothing compared with your life. If escaping is not an option, then lock yourself somewhere. Bedrooms are usually the first rooms burglars check because that's where most people keep their valuables. So it's better to stay away from them. Still, if there's no other way, bedrooms better than nothing. Lock it and pretend you're asleep. But if you can, then better hide somewhere else. The bathroom is a great choice because it's usually not of interest to burglars. Now, stay quiet. The burglar probably won't spend more than 10 minutes in your house. If the intruder doesn't find your inside, you'll avoid confrontation. The most important thing is you staying safe. So don't move or make any noise. As soon as you're safe and hidden, call the police immediately. Remember, when calling them, always give your location first. In case something happens and you're not able to finish your conversation, at least they'll know where to go. If you can do it without being noticed, try to study the intruder as carefully as you can. Make sure to remember their height, body type, the way of walking, hair color, race, gender, age, and any other specific details you might notice. Anything you can spot will be helpful. If you can look outside and see the vehicle, remember its brand, color, and the license plate number. Then, wait again. Just freeze and never leave the place you've chosen until the burglar leaves or the authorities arrive and help you out. But burglars don't go to any random house. They don't want to be noticed. So they choose their target very carefully. And you can make it so they don't pick yours. Make your house an open space. The greenery makes the house harder to observe, so burglars pick those houses that have the most of it. Make sure to trim all the shrubbery that hides windows and doors. Turn on the lights as soon as it's dark every day of the year. Illuminate everything. The porches, the driveway, the yard, both the front and the backyard. First, it makes the surroundings more visible, and burglars will prefer to stay away. Second, it makes an impression that there's someone home and they don't want anyone to be there when they break in. Lock all the doors and windows. People forget to close their bathroom window, and burglars know it very well. There should never be a way in. Don't leave any secret way to enter the house in case you forget your keys. If you know about such a way, so do burglars. If you have any trees too close to your house, cut the branches so it's not possible to climb it and get into any of the windows. Keep all of your tools and store ladders in a locked garage. Don't ever keep them lying around when you don't use them, because they can all be used to break into your house. Don't have any spare keys hidden in random places outside the house. Better give one to a neighbor you trust. When you move into a new house or apartment, change the locks if possible. Make sure that your doors look modern and reliable. Old and bad doors that are easy to crack attract burglars. Don't throw away copies of documents or unnecessary checks just like that. Burglars can check your trash to learn more about you. So shred documents into itty-bitty pieces before you throw them away. Don't leave boxes from a new plasma TV, expensive phone, laptop, or gold watch near your house. Don't show anybody that you're well off. Make sure that the house number is clearly displayed and can be easily noticed. This way, the authorities or any other help will be able to find your house way faster. Even if you have security cameras installed, they don't guarantee that your house won't become a target. The cameras are helpful when finding the robber after everything's happened, but they don't prevent any action. Many robberies happen when people are away for some holiday, so the burglars shouldn't find out you're not going to be home for a long time. Whenever you leave, make it look like you're actually home. Tell your neighbors you're leaving. Ask them to keep an eye out on your house and check it from time to time. To check if there's someone currently living in the house, burglars often check the mail. 
If the mailbox is full, it means there's no one living there right now. Ask your neighbor to collect the mail for you and clean the porch from ads and newspapers. Burglars may also leave marks on your house. For example, they can put a thin strip cut from a plastic bottle into the doorway. If it stays on the door for one or two days, this tells the burglar that there is no one at home. So ask your neighbor to check these things out too. Ask them to park their car occasionally in front of your house for a while. This will give an impression that you have visitors. Still, if the house stands quiet for days, it's obvious there's no one living there currently. You can set up a timer for lights, radio, or TV so it works a couple of hours a day. If you're leaving for a long time, make arrangements so that your grass is cut and watered or the snow in front of your house is shoveled. It's a good idea not to post photos from your vacation while you're there. Burglars use social media, and they do their research. It's dangerous even if you have a private account, because burglars can collaborate with tech-savvy criminals. They would break into the accounts of rich people, find out when they were going on vacation, and inform the burglars about it. But before someone breaks into your house, they watch it for a while. They want to know when you're home and when you're not. If you start getting many random calls, it might be a sign that they check what time of the day you're out. If the light sensors start malfunctioning, check immediately if everything's alright. This doesn't always mean there are problems with electricity. Burglars may cut the wiring. Watch out for doors. If you notice scratches on the lock or it's becoming harder for you to open the door with your key, it might mean that someone tried to break into your house. Change the locks immediately. A break-in starts with a knock on the door. If you happen to be home at the time, it's important to learn how to answer it to scare them away. Always pretend like you're not home alone. You can call out something like, Can anyone answer the door, please? Teach your kids that they should never answer the door or open it to anyone unsupervised. You wake up in the middle of the night from a noise coming from downstairs. First thing you need to do is check what the noise is. If you suspect someone's in your house, do this quickly and quietly. It might just be a mouse that knocks something over. Still, if your suspicions are confirmed and you see someone in your dining hall, look for a way out immediately. Use the fire escape ladder if you have one. Otherwise, a window might do the trick. Still, chances are you'll have to stay put. Grab the phone and call the authorities. Give them your address and explain the situation as briefly as you can. And in a heartbeat, they'll dispatch a unit to your house. Reaching your street, they can't find your house number anywhere. They get there eventually, but only after having followed the numbers from other houses in the neighborhood. By the time the authorities arrive, the burglars already escaped. That's because your house number can barely be seen. It's so tiny. Your mailbox's one is barely noticeable, too. Get a new and shiny plaque. Make sure the number's big and visible. This will not only help your guests find your house sooner, but you'll also avoid the authorities missing your house next time. While you're at it, make sure the mailbox number's visible too. Another good way to protect your house is by adding a fence to it if you don't already have one. Make sure it's hard to get through. Use chain link or even metal fencing. Dig it into concrete as well so burglars can't lift it. If you're okay with a rough look, you can even try out barbed wire fencing. Next up, add lighting to your yard, because if your yard's all dark, it'll be a perfect target for unwanted visitors. Keep a few lamps outside that you can turn on and off. A well-lit yard will let you see what's up outside, and your neighbors too. If they spot someone, they'll call you and the authorities if need be. A spotlight camera is an extra. It usually stays off during daytime and works with a motion detector. It's really bright and lights up when it senses any movement. You can even get one that also starts recording at once. So not only will you frighten burglars, but will also have video proof in case anything does happen. Another thing is a ring camera. Whenever someone rings the door, you can pick it up without even being home. Since your phone's connected to the doorbell, you only need to answer the call wherever you are. If it's someone you don't know and you're smelling something fishy, you can pretend to be home and let them know you're not interested. Dense shrubs in your yard will give the burglar a place to hide, and you might not even notice there's someone trespassing. Keep your shrubbery closely trimmed. It'll not only keep you safe, 
but also add a bit more shine to your yard. While you're out on vacation, avoid posting your whereabouts on social media. Say someone's had your house on their radar for a while now. You being gone is the perfect opportunity for them to strike. Leave posting the nice pictures you took for when you get back home, and you can keep an eye on things. Oh, and don't show people what you do day to day either. It'll be easy for someone to keep track of your daily schedule and plan an assault for when you're out grocery shopping, for example. This one's obvious, but always lock your home when you leave, even if you think you live in a safe neighborhood. And if you've just moved into a new house, change your locks too. It works for apartments as well, or even if you're just renting a room, you can never be too safe. Always keep the appearance that someone's inside the house, <laughs> even when it's empty. The first way to do it is leave your television on, or even better, buy a TV simulator. This way, you can program it to turn on and off as you please. I mean, it'd be weird if it was constantly on. It'll save you a couple of bucks as well, because simulators consume less than the real thing. Get a plug-in alarm clock as well and connect a lamp to it. Set timers for it to go off. Let's say dinner time and for a while at night. You can also get an extra alarm clock and connect a radio to it. If people think you're blasting some tunes, they surely won't try to do anything. Don't forget any valuable items outside. Things like your grill, bikes, and any machinery you might have. Store them inside your garage instead and lock it tight. Security cameras outside your home will let you keep an eye on things even while you're at work. This one's particularly good if you're extra worried someone's going to break in. Consider reinforcing your door, even if it's relatively new. Instead of breaking in, they might try and completely knock down the door if they're desperate to get in. Get a sturdier one that won't come down easily. This goes for windows too. It's worth investing in a type of glass that won't break when a rock hits it. Or use security film. It's a strong transparent plastic you put on your windows to strengthen them. Even if your windows break, this film will hold the shards of glass in place. It'll delay the entry by quite a bit, so they might even quit the whole thing. How much mail you've got also lets people know if you're home or not. If there's a huge pile of it, it's clear you haven't checked it for at least a couple of days. So even if your house wasn't a target, it might be now. Get familiar with your neighbors, invite them over for a cup of tea, and talk about your concerns. You'll watch their back, and they'll watch yours. And if anyone suspicious comes around, they'll let you know. You can even ask for a favor or two while you're on vacation. Ask them to park one of their cars in your driveway to pretend someone's at home. While you're at it, give them the key to your mailbox and ask them to take your letters for you. You'll repay them when they go on vacation. Take a walk around your house and put yourself in the mind of a burglar. Hmm. What would you do to get in? There's a tree there that you can climb to reach the second floor. Or maybe it's just too easy to climb the pile of junk that you've got there. It's worth getting rid of both to keep the top floors hard to reach, and no one will be tempted to break the top windows and try to get in like that. If you've got a mail slot in your front door, be aware of mailbox fishing. It's where a burglar puts a pole straight through the mail slot and fishes for keys, or maybe even tries to unlock the door. Get a mailbox cage. This way, if they try to do this, they won't get far. Valuables inside the house are another thing. Keep them out of sight as much as you can. The safest thing you can do is get a safe. But otherwise, you can get decoy items just in case burglars do get in your house. Keep a few fake gold bracelets next to your bedside table. They'll think they've scored big time when, in fact, they're going home empty-handed. If you've always wanted a pet, now's the time to get a dog. Make sure it has a cozy place to sleep outside. And as a thank you, it's going to protect your house. As soon as it hears someone step foot in the yard, it'll warn you by barking. Not only that, but it'll wake up the entire neighborhood too, which will bring even more attention to what's happening. Don't ever put up a calendar or all of this will be for nothing. Say a burglar comes out the back and just looks through the window. If they spot a calendar with the exact dates you're going to be away, none of these tricks will work because they'll know better than to fall for them. And as a last resort, you can get a panic button and keep it next to you when you sleep. You can program it to call the authorities with the press of a button. With that, you'll have alerted them that your house is being invaded. Airports are some of the most visited and, at the same time, mysterious places out there. 
So, let's see what's going on behind the scenes and what secrets airports hide. At some airports, there are special people called profilers. Such people bring to life a special program called SPOT, Screening Passengers by Observation Technique. They analyze your mimics, gestures, and behavior in order to detect suspicious people. Their job is to notice nonverbal signs of anxiety, people licking their lips, itching, or looking around a lot. If a profiler notices a person acting in an unusual way, they can invite them for an inspection. There, they talk to this person, trying to find out more about them and confirm, or not, their suspicions. Airport agents might also be watching you all the way from the security check to your gate. Some airports have facial recognition scanners that can easily track you. They're equipped with special software that compares passengers' faces with their IDs. Keep in mind that if you don't charge your laptop before the flight, it may be confiscated. It's not uncommon for an airport security officer to ask you to power your device up. If you fail to do it, your gadget can be taken away for an additional check. For safety reasons, it's crucial to make sure that it hasn't been tampered with or modified in a way that can cause harm during the flight. Packing an electric brush in your check-in luggage may land you in trouble. Brushes produced by some brands have lithium batteries inside, and those can potentially lead to serious problems in the air. That's why leaving your electric brush in your check suitcase isn't an option. But you're allowed to store them in your carry-on bag. At the same time, if your device runs on AA batteries, you can put it wherever you want. Anyone who's ever traveled by plane knows about the no liquids rule, but not everybody knows that this rule also applies to peanut butter, toothpaste, creams, lotions, liquid makeup, lava lamps, snow globes, some kinds of medications, deodorant, and even gel shoe inserts. Now, let's go outside for a while and look at those landing spots. Airports charge airline companies huge fees for landing on their runways on certain days and at particular times. But the most interesting thing is that the landing spots can be bought and sold. For example, in 2016, Oman Air paid Air France around $75 million for one early morning arrival slot at London Heathrow Airport. You must have noticed that airfare has increased over the past decade. That's because of the extremely high prices of landing slots. Dispatchers don't only control the planes in the sky, as you can often see in the movies, but they also look after their movements on the ground. They also control the lighting on the runways. There's three types of air traffic controllers, en route, terminal, and tower. Each of these dispatchers has their own area of responsibility. One dispatcher has about five monitors, and the information on them is constantly changing since the monitors show weather conditions and information about other planes. You know how it sometimes goes. You come to a security checkpoint, and all of a sudden, it turns out you have something prohibited in your carry-on. But worry not, you still have a chance to save your favorite pen knife. At some airports, there are on-site postal services, and you might have an opportunity to mail your belongings to any address you provide. But the mailing fees are pretty high. Plus, certain items are prohibited, and the postal service won't deliver them. Airports can be selling your lost luggage right now. Of course, I don't say that there's no chance for you to get back your suitcases that's traveled to a different destination, but just as likely, you might not see it again. In this case, an airport has the right to sell your misplaced belongings at an auction. Most airports have an annual lost luggage sale. After paying an entry fee, you can bid on electronics, clothes, bags, and other stuff. While flying, you might have a celebrity on board, but you won't know it. Large airports have separate check-in and security procedures for celebrities. They often board the plane directly through a hidden door located beside the jet bridge. Some airlines also use cool cars to transfer VIP passengers from the terminal building to the plane. At the same time, most people come to the airport well ahead of time. And the most popular activity while waiting for a flight is wandering through the duty-free zone. And even though people rarely plan to buy anything there, 
different products end up in their shopping baskets. That's because lots of airports are designed in a special way that makes people feel relaxed and at ease. I'm talking about all those huge windows, a lot of light, massage chairs, and comfortable seating areas. And statistically, calm passengers are 10% more likely to spend money on retail, duty-free, and food. Designers put a lot of thought into airport layouts. It helps to ensure the smooth flow of travelers. And the main point here is easy navigation that can prevent people from getting lost. This is achieved through subtle but very effective design cues. And placing duty-free zones between security checkpoints and boarding gates is one of them. They supposedly help you relax after clearing security and lead you where you need to go. But speaking of food, a celebrity chef restaurant at the airport might not be as good as it would be if you were visiting the real thing. Not chefs themselves, but special restaurant companies are responsible for airport outlets. One of the reasons is the extremely strict security that surrounds airport deliveries, including food. You may still have a nice meal, but it won't be the same. Now, I'll tell you about one more way airports manipulate you into spending your money. They make you walk through the shiny duty-free stores straight after the security check. But the most curious thing is that the walkway through such stores usually veers to the left. That's done because most people are right-handed which means they use their right arm to pull their luggage and are more likely to look to the right while passing through the stores. And the duty-free zone veering to the left leaves more space on the right where passengers are more likely to look. Oh, and have you ever noticed how many mirrors there are at airports? Mirrors are strategically placed there to make airports appear larger and create an illusion of more space. This in turn helps to reduce the feeling of claustrophobia and makes the airport experience more comfortable for travelers. If you have an opportunity, don't exchange cash at the airport. You'll never get a good rate there. Those who didn't buy local currency in advance can instead order it online and collect it at the airport. Some services only need a few hours notice for such an order. Or it might even be better to use an ATM to withdraw some cash at your final destination. Now, have you ever paid attention to airport codes? The most often used are three-letter codes. Why this number? Back in the 1930s in the USA, pilots used the National Weather Service's two-letter city codes to refer to airports. But soon, the number of airports in the country outgrew the number of such codes. That's why airlines expanded this system by adding the third letter. It was usually X. That's how LA, Los Angeles, turned into LAX. But even though there shouldn't be two airports with the same code, some of these codes sound so similar you could easily mistake one for the other. For example, look at this airport with the code CGP in Bangladesh. And here we have CPG. It's the code of an airport in Argentina. It's dangerously easy to fly to the wrong place, so pay attention! A boarding pass seems to have more than one option. Right after the crew checks it, use it wisely. Tuck one side of a boarding pass right under your phone cover, and the second side goes under the tray table latch. Sounds weird, but this Redditor tried it, and I guess he didn't have a boring flight thanks to this makeshift movie theater. Ever shop till you dropped so much you wished you had a couple of extra hands? The next time you set on a supermarket adventure, make sure to take a carabiner with you. This little guy will compensate for the lack of extra hands, so you'll carry everything you bought on that Black Friday sale with the two of your default hands. Just put all those plastic bags on a carabiner. To upgrade your experience, I strongly suggest you make a fabric grip. Any keen athletes here? This one's for you. If your pockets have no zippers or buttons and you don't want to lose keys, loose change, or whatever else you keep in your pockets while running, you need a rubber band. Just tie the pocket up from the inside like this Redditor did. Also, it's a nice remedy for pickpocketing and lost paranoia. One more workout trick here. Sometimes, socks have inside seams which can give you blisters while running. No need to get rid of these socks and buy new ones. Just wear the ones you have inside out. This Redditor is a genius. Oh, yeah. 
In case you ever doubt if a $100 bill you're holding is real, you can use Ooh. this magic trick. You see this blue authenticity line? It looks like it's woven inside the paper. Now, fold the bill in such a way that this blue line is in front of you and the paper is slightly bent backward. Grab a needle and try to insert it right under the flap that you see. If the bill is real, you'll see that there's actually a slit in your bill. Thing is, fake printed money can't normally have this feature, as in most cases they simply don't have the multiple layers to allow for this. The wet traces a plunger leaves on the floor are sort of gross, even if you rinsed it thoroughly. So next time it comes to your rescue, make sure to dry it afterward. The best way to do that is to rest it under the seat to dry. Ever seen these traps on shopping carts? You can repurpose them to keep your drink safe. Yeah, that's a bit barbarian. I wish there were special holders for that in each and every cart. For those who like to sleep in airport lounges, this one is a lifesaver. To protect your valuable hand luggage, just loop your bag through your foot. Yes, strapping it onto your leg or arm seems more effective, but it's not that all the bags have such a feature. You can use this life hack in other crowded places too. This Redditor does this trick in bars, and it seems to work just fine. Oh, really? There's also a trick on how to sift the flour in the fastest way possible. Surprisingly, you'll need a massage device for that. Look how fast you can do that, and no more shaking. A piece of an eraser can help you control your automated car windows better. This Redditor's dog was quite excited each time it got a ride, so it would accidentally push the window switch with a paw. The Redditor just put a well-fitted piece of eraser into that dimple, and the problem was solved. Picture this. You have a sore throat. You consult a doctor, and they prescribe you a throat spray that works wonders. There's only one downside to this. You just can't stand the taste. It's not a big deal, and a cotton swab can help you with that. Just apply the throat spray directly to the throat to avoid all the taste buds on your tongue. Not all people are big fans of plain black coffee. If you accidentally run out of milk or creamer, there's a life hack. Just add some ice cream to your drink instead. It will soften up the original coffee taste. Some candles tend to melt a hole into themselves. The more you burn it, the bigger this hole gets. And in the end, the wick gets burned out and there's still a lot of wax. Mm. To prevent it, you can make your candle a nice hat made of aluminum foil. Once you light the candle and put the cap on it, the heat will distribute evenly, melting all the wax. Yes. These glitches between skirting boards can be pretty annoying and they can ruin the whole look of your room. You can cover these glitches with a piece of chalk, just like this Redditor did. You have this lovely set of cutlery your great-grandmother left you, but it faded with time and no dish soap managed to help. Hot water, baking soda, salt, and aluminum foil can help you. Just mix them all in one container and mind that the sheet of aluminum foil should simply be immersed in water. Then grab the cutlery and just dip it into the mixture. It works instantly. Look what a gorgeous result this Redditor had. Really? Duct tape can help you adjust your parquet without ruining it. If you ever see a slit and you need to move a parquet tile, grab some duct tape, stick it to the tile, and then pull. The tile will move to the place where it's supposed to be. To make the suction cups hold well, add a layer of Vaseline. This way, they will stick better. And next time that they don't hold, just reapply the Vaseline. A simple spatula may come in handy not only in the kitchen, but in a bedroom too. Hmm. Next time you change bed sheets, use a spatula to tuck them in between the bed and the mattress. This TikToker swears by this life hack that helps make the bed the same way they do in hotels. Some people like collecting baseballs, but it's not that easy to display them on the shelf as they tend to roll away. You can use bottle caps as baseball holders, just like this Redditor. In case you don't like the design of the caps, get creative and paint them. Tin cans with tomato soup and other stuff aren't the most convenient thing out there. Sometimes you only need a part of that jar. 
but the leftovers can't be stored properly once you open up the mm. tin lid. Mm. A jar of Nutella is a lifesaver for such cases. Its lid fits perfectly on tin cans. Ever notice that accumulating sticky residue on the bottom of your laundry detergent cup? This one can be pretty hard to clean. So next time you do your laundry, just throw it in with the wash. You can actually put the laundry detergent cup inside the washing machine each time you use it. This way, the residue won't build up and the cup will always be clean. Let's imagine you have two hard disk magnets and a bag of chips. Are these things related? Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Next time you're too full to finish the chips, secure the bag with two magnets. They will keep the air away when you decide to finish the bag. The taste will be the same. Don't throw away leftover soap bars. You can use it until the very end. This Redditor showed how they sort of weld the leftover bar with the new one. And these two guys stick to each other while lathering. If you don't find it convenient, you can go creative and make the liquid soap out of the leftovers instead. Once you've collected enough tiny bars, grate them, then melt them in a microwave oven, and then add some water. You can regulate the consistency yourself. The more water you add, the more watery the soap will get. You can also add a dash of liquid glycerin for extra moistening. Let the mixture sit for 24 hours, and there you have it, your DIY liquid soap. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the